Today is the 17th of September, 2012. We are in Troy, New York at the uh, Troy Senior Center. My name is Wayne Clark. I'm with the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs, New York. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and your date and place of birth, please? Okay, my name, James Benedict Martin. I was born in Troy, New York. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, when were you born? When in 1925, October. Okay. And did you attend school in Troy? Oh, yes. I attended uh, first one year of Catholic High. Mm -hmm. Then I transferred to Troy High. Actually, it was a secondary school because they were building the new one mm -hmm. at the time, so we were in a, another building for the school, the second year. Okay. Now, now you dropped out of school? I dropped out of school to go into service. Now, did you enlist or were you drafted? Uh, well, I was drafted, but I was given the choice of what, what branch I wanted. Okay. Now, I see you picked the Marine Corps. Yeah. Why did you pick the Marines? Well. I, I always had a, a phobia about going in deep water. Mm -hmm. So I figured, well, if I get wounded in the service, I'm not going to be able to swim the ocean. Of course, at the time, I had no idea how big the oceans were. Mm -hmm. I couldn't swim them anyway. But uh, anyway, I did go in. The service. I now, when when did you go into service? I went into service in 1943. Okay. Do you recall if it was in the summer or the winter or spring? No, it was it was warm out. It okay. was still summer. And uh, did you go to Paris Island for your basic training? I certainly did. Was that your first time away from home? Oh no, we we grew up away from. We were in an institution for most of our kids' life. Oh, I because see. Because our father had six kids and he couldn't afford them. I see. To uh, make a living with us, you know, hanging on them all the time. Mm -hmm. So okay. we, were, we were entered in St. Joseph's Infant Home in Troy. And then when we became 16, we got transferred to a boys' school, Hillside School in Troy, New York. Okay. So you, so you went to Paris Island for your basic. What was that like for you? Well, that was pretty easy for me because growing away from home, mm -hmm. you don't have the homesickness that some of these other people had. I see. How was the food down there? Food was all right. Uh huh. Yeah. I can't pick up any of that, you know, it was helpful food. And now, was there, it. was there anybody in basic training with you that, that you knew from back here? No, I didn't know no. anybody. No. So once your basic training was over, where did they send you next? They sent me to uh, Lake Lejeune, not Lake Lejeune, but uh, Camp Lejeune. Mm -hmm. California because we were getting, uh, at that time, you got a basic training, but you didn't get all of your training until you got overseas. I see. So we went from New York to California, and then from there we got shipped out. How much time did you spend in California? Not too much, maybe a month too much. Mm -hmm. And it was mostly training there? Yeah, that's all it was. Then you got a sh on a ship to go overseas? Mm -hmm. You recall the name of the ship? Oh, no. They were all Navy ships. We oh, I see. The Marine is a, a separate entity. Mm -hmm. But uh, like during the war, the Coast Guard becomes part of the Treasury Department. Now, the Marines, they're, they're separate mm -hmm. because the Marines were the best, mm -hmm. really. Not, I'm not saying that because I was a Marine, but I guess 
that old saying is that once a Marine, you're always a Marine, mm -hmm. which is true. All right. Now, you got on board ship, and where did they send you? Uh, well, we went to an island called Saipan. Oh. That was our base camp. And that's where we left to hit any island we were going to hit. Mm -hmm. And we went back there when we got through with the campaign. Now, when you when you got to Saipan, did you encounter oh, the yes. Japanese? Yes. <laughs> that's my first encounter with a Jap. Okay. I went over there thinking all Japs were small. The first Jap I see was six foot something, and he weighed about 400 pounds. Really? He was dead. He was bloated in a ditch. You know? Oh, he was dead, you mean? And I, I looked at the Jap there and I said to the Marine with me, I said, if that's the kind of guys we got to fight, I'm not going to have a chance. I was 129 pounds. Uh -huh. And here's a guy four 400 pounds at least. Hmm. In the Imperial Marines, they had to be five foot ten to get in them. Yeah. So this guy was six foot something. So he was well within that uh, criteria. When, when were you actually in combat? Well, we weren't there too long. We were hitting islands. We were, we were hitting a lot of islands. Mm -hmm. I was in a lot of campaigns. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you want to tell us about some of them, the more memorable ones? Or? Well, they're all that way, you know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, now, when you were on Saipan, were you there when the 27th Division? Yes, yes I was. They lost their colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess they got taken back off the line, you know, because they let the Jazz break through. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, I remember that because they were from Troy. Yeah. You know, so. Now, did you run into any of the guys from Troy that you, no, you knew? No, I didn't. No? no? Well, we didn't have that much to do with them. Yeah. See, the, the Army is the Army, and the Marines are the Marines. Mm -hmm. They have their own campaigns, and we have ours. Mm -hmm. Now, we're the ones that hit the islands. We secure the islands, and some other efforts take over. Okay. Now on, uh, now on Saipan, what were your living conditions like? Well, we lived in a big tent. Mm -hmm. And they were big enough for well, there was plenty of room in it. Yeah. And we had uh, 10 Marines to a tent. And it wasn't bad living, you know, because mm -hmm. it was always sunny. And as long as I was warm, I was all right. If I was cold, I wouldn't have been. Yeah. Did you uh, have any uh, hurricanes or typhoons or anything? No, we didn't. We were fortunate. Okay. Now, what about, uh, what about things like, I, I heard there were a lot of like land crabs and... Uh, oh yeah, well they, they could live a handful of, or a, a week on a handful of rice. And they used to eat fish heads and we couldn't eat that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now what about uh, tropic diseases like uh, dengue fever, uh, malaria? Oh I did, I, got, I didn't get malaria but I got uh, tuberculosis. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Now, that was, that had to be when I was, I was only 20 years old. Mm hmm I had operation at that time. Now, you picked up the TB on one of the islands? Oh, yeah. Because I, what I did, these people sell their daughters. Because they got a daughter in the family, mm -hmm. they sell the daughter. So there was one girl that I was taking care of, you know, giving her money to live on, because they didn't have nothing to live on. And uh, I bought her out of her bondage mm -hmm. with this madam, you know. And I think I paid three hundred and something dollars to get her out of bondage for that woman. Now she would have stayed with her forever mm -hmm. if I had not brought her out, but I did, and I don't know how she ever made it out really because I lost count of her after a while, you know. But she was she was glad when I bought her out of bondage because. Uh, 
they can't do anything on their own. Mm -hmm. So somebody had to be leading them all the time. Okay. So it, some, somewhere around that time you ended up with uh, tuberculosis? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then I had that, that cut out years ago, 50, at least 50 years ago. Now, did they uh, put you on a hospital ship or sh ship you out oh, somewhere? No, no, no. They, they didn't know I had it till I got out of the service. Oh, I see. Okay. Because they weren't taking x-rays of anybody, you know? Uh-huh. When, when they were discharging people, they were just discharging them as their time came up. Now, I tell you, my first night in Saipan, we went up to relieve the front line. Our battalion, and when we got up to the front line, there was a another Marine outfit that was already there. Mm -hmm. So it was getting dark, so we formed a secondary line, and in between the two lines, there was a road, dirt road. Well, about three o'clock in the morning, all hell broke loose, and. Everything was blowing up, machine guns, mortars. I made a dive for a rock pile, and somehow my legs got cut off, circulation, and I thought my legs got blown off. I thought the pain was so intense I couldn't feel them. Mm -hmm. So I'm very asking this other Marine to look at my legs to see if they're there, because I thought they were gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, it, I didn't have any injury. I thought I did. I thought my legs were gone because I thought the pain was too bad. Now, that same day, that same night where I had laid originally, I got up because it was too rocky. Mm -hmm. And this other kid, 16 years old, he lied to get in the Marines. He got hit with the first knee mortar. And it blew his hand off, it was right on his face. He was always talking about getting a purple heart. Well, he got it that night. Mm. And that was my first introduction to battle. Now, now what what happened that uh, you lost the feeling in your legs? Were you hit with shrapnel or? No, but I, I, I must have had my legs draped over a rock or something because it cut the circulation away. Oh. And I couldn't feel them. They probably went to sleep, and I didn't know that. I thought they got blown off. Oh. But uh, I was so glad to hear that, you know, yeah. that they hadn't got blown off. Well, that was my first night in combat. Mm -hmm. And when I made the dock for this rock, rock pile, I left my rifle where I was. I didn't take it with me. No. I didn't have a weapon at all that night. And one guy, one machine gunner, Used up 22 belts of ammunition. Now there's 30 Japs on this coming up this road mm -hmm. at three o'clock in the morning, singing. They didn't know we were there, of course. We got them all, you know. But uh, well, I talked to him. He started about scared. Mm. Mm. So that was Saipan. That was Saipan. Okay. And then we had the same thing with Indian. Tinian, that's only across the lake from yep. Saipan. Yeah, we hit that island too, and we hit quite a few of them. Now on Okinawa, like I say, I was a runner in the Marines, where all day we'd be running, advancing, mm -hmm. so at night I'd have to bring a message back to rear echelon uh -huh. to some guy in the, in the back, you know. So I had to go back where I had just come from, mm -hmm. and I guess I was fast enough. You had to worry about not getting shot by your own people, right? Oh no, I mean, they were firing uh, these uh, artillery bursts 30 feet over our heads, you know, and they exploded, they spread out. Mm -hmm. Fortunately enough, I never got hit, but I know one thing, I, I spent 10 days in the brig because I left my walkie-talkie in the pitch. 
they never work with no hill in the way. Yeah. And uh, I said, this, all this thing is throwing extra fire. So I said, I'm going to leave this here. So when we got back to Saipan, our company commander, he didn't like me and I didn't like him. And he got all the, the company together. And he's, those walkers, those runners that were 536 is away on Okinawa, they're going to be hanging. I'm not so sure they won't be. I was kneeling right in front of him. And if he had taken one step toward me, I would have shot him without thinking of twice. Mm -hmm. That's how close I came to killing one of our own people. So you ended up going into the break for ten days, just, just for leaving. They call the it piss and punk. Yeah. Now that didn't bother me much because I didn't smoke, but the smokers, they had it tough. Oh, they didn't have cigarettes. No, they wouldn't let them have cigarettes. Uh, now, uh, <clears throat> what rank were you? PFC. Okay. But yeah. I left Paris Island with the PFC. Okay. So they you, didn't... you don't get too many advancements in the Marines because mm -hmm. there's too many people, there's too many qualified people ahead of you that probably were there ahead of you. Yeah. So they would come into it before you were. But I was satisfied with it. Mm -hmm. That was $54 a month you used to get paid. $50 and then $4 for P and PFC. Mm -hmm. Now, when the war ended um, with the dropping of the atomic bombs, whereabouts were you at that point? We were right there where he dropped it. In fact, we landed in Japan. Now, when we hit Okinawa, we hit that on Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then we secured that island after a while. That was the biggest island we hit. So, uh, Okinawa. Did you hit Iwo Jima too? No, we were full reserve for them. Okay. I'm fortunate that I wasn't on that one because that was the tough one. They got hung up on the coral and mm -hmm. you know, all them Higgins boats and a lot of guys got killed needlessly there because they couldn't get off the coral. So, so were you on Okinawa when the war ended? No. I was probably back in Saipan at the time. Saipan, okay. So we we're going to invade Japan, and they announced over the loudspeaker that when we got to, to Japan, we were going to be given liberty. And they said, no, this is a test case, because nobody is allowed to carry any weapons out into the town. So when we got to Japan, a couple of days go by and then they grant us liberty. Now in the morning we used to have school. Mm -hmm. In the afternoon it was your own time, you know. So I got I got to the the Southern Marine and me. We went out on liberty. We figured, well I'm not gonna walk out in that town knowing these people who are our enemy and had them had me no weapon at all. So we stopped in a little store that was on the side of the road and we, we both bought a screwdriver apiece, which would have been nothing if they had a rifle. Yeah. But we were fortunate. We, the people were very friendly. Mm -hmm. And they, they didn't want the, the war any more than we wanted. But they were forced into it because of their higher ups. But anyway, we landed in Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. That's where they dropped the, the second atomic bomb. You wouldn't believe the way it leveled everything. Everything was flat. Yeah. You wouldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I've seen explosions tear out things, but boy, this. How much time did you spend in Japan? Oh, I was there at least. At least a, a year. Oh, were you? Oh, yeah. Now, what did they have you doing there? Well, I'm not sure. Well, we got school in the morning. 
Now, what kind of what kind of schooling? Well, that's what I'm trying to remember. I can't remember oh. what we were we were being taught because that supposedly was the West Point of Japan, Nagasaki, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess we were overseering it, you know. Yep. Now, did you learn any Japanese? At all? Well, I, I knew a little bit at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not enough to really talk fluently, but yeah. I could, I could converse with Jack, but it wasn't too fast. Yeah. Well, yeah that's, that's quite an experience. So you stayed that you stayed in uh, Japan for a year. Yeah. And after then, the war ended. Then you go by a point system. Like for every month you're over there, you get so many points. Oh, I see. And at the time, I got the scars. We had a fire in our barracks at three o'clock in the morning. And uh, I figured it was another fire drill, so I rolled over. Then I hear everybody yelling, and I look up, look out in the hallway, and, and see all the smoke. Well, I started to move down. In fact, I got out of there with one pair of pants and one shoe. And I left my money and everything else in my barracks, you know. And uh, these. Eric's never seen a drop of paint. They're as dry as could be. Mm -hmm. So they really went up fast. So the guy says to me the next day, because I'm going to be discharged, sent back to the States to be discharged. So he says, well, you can't go home with just one shoe and one uh, pair of pants. So he says, I'll issue you a new set, but in order for me to do that, you can't be discharged today. I said, forget the pants, forget the shoe. I'll be discharged. I'll take the discharge without the uniform. Now, this was in Japan or in the States? In Japan. Okay. So I came back to the States with one pair of pants and one shoe. I didn't even have a hat. Nothing. And they allowed you? Uh... Well, <laughs> they were left it up to me, you know, because I was going home to get discharged. I knew that when I, right. you know, when it was my turn. Because you had to have 85 points in order to be sent back. Yeah. And uh, we got down, we got back, and we went to a place called Bainbridge, Maryland. And that's where we got discharged from. Now the same thing happened there with this sergeant. He wanted to issue me a complete set of uniforms. And I told him, I said, no, I'll take the discharge. So I left the service with one shoe and one pair of pants. I didn't get anything issued for me because I they, was... They let you leave posts like that? Oh, yeah. They told me, hey, I'm already discharged. I'm just going to... I'm, there to sign the papers and leave. Yeah, did they give you any money when you left? Oh, yeah, they, they, they gave me my muster now pay. Yeah. I didn't get a lot because it wasn't that much. You only got, like when you were over there, you got paid in scrip. Mm -hmm. You got $15 a payday. And if you had any more than that, when you got discharged where you're ready to come back, they figured you got it on the black market. So I had to give money away because I couldn't turn it in. They only allow you to turn in $15. So I had money I had to give away because I I couldn't bring it back. The scoop wouldn't be any good in the States. No. Hmm. That's quite an experience, I'll tell you. So what the, the first thing you did was go out and buy some clothes? No, I didn't. What I did when I got discharged, I figured, well, I better see if I can get to New York City. So, anyway, I got on a train and I came back and got off in New York. What was it? Well, one of the main railroad stations there. Mm -hmm. So, I'm walking around in the middle of the night looking for a hotel. At that time, you couldn't buy a hotel room. Everything was loaded with people. And people from discharge, all the services. Yep. And you still just had one shoe and... That's all I had. Huh. 
That's how I came home. <laughs> you know, I'm looking for a hotel room, and I go to all these different hotels. Nobody had any room. So I'm walking, and this guy comes up to me, and he says, Hey, Marine, you looking for a hotel room? I said, yeah, yeah. Well, I got a place. Well, I, I didn't take him up on it because I figured he was trying to pick me up. Oh. So I didn't, I didn't go with the guy because I didn't know if he was after my body or what. Mm -hmm. you know? But I wasn't going to take the chance because that city was loaded with people at that time. Yeah. So you got on the train and came back to Troy? Oh, yeah, I came back on the train. Okay. Now, when you came back, uh, now what was it in the summertime, the winter time? Oh yeah, it was summer. Summer. Well, that's Fort, the way I was way able to walk around New York because yeah. if it was cold, I wouldn't. I would have probably had it hold up somewhere. Yeah. No, it was summer. Okay. Once you came back to Troy, where did you go? Oh, we had a house. Okay. My father bought a house while we were all in the service. And I had uh, four, bro five brothers and one sister. Okay. And uh, she was living with our grandfather and grandmother, my sister. The other guys, they were still in the service where they were already discharged and living home. Mm -hmm. But we did move in with my father when we came back. Now, did, did you sign up for that 5220 club? Oh, yeah. I drew that for 20 weeks. And uh, then I signed up for unemployment. That's when I had to go to work, you know, because that $20 didn't go very, very far. Mm -hmm. But it was better than nothing. Where did you end up going to work? Uh, well, at that time, I was, my father and all my uncles were carpenters by trade. And the only way you could get into the union at that time was you had to have somebody who already in the union to speak for you, you know. Now I signed up with my father and my uncles, and I kept it for a, maybe a couple of months. Then I quit, because I didn't want to be a carpenter. So I did went around like that for a while, looking for us something else, not finding anything. I signed up, got out, signed up, got out. Then I figured, well, maybe I better try a service. That's when I went back in the coast car. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure the Zates on the Coast Guard, because I was stationed down on Route uh, Pier 9 you know, up in New York. It was a good duty. What we used to do, we had a seagoing tug. We used to go out and meet these ships coming in from overseas mm -hmm. to make sure that they were living according to the law. That was, that was quite, a, quite a duty. I huh? liked it. You did that for a couple of years, or? No, not, not for two years, but I did it for, I'd say, maybe a year and a half. Okay. I did it for a while. And then uh, once you left the Coast Guard, what did you do? I came home, and I did get back in the Union. I see. Then I made out very well in the Union because I became their financial secretary, and then I became the business agent. The carpenters in Troy. So I was sending the guys to the contractors. I see. Because I knew all their qualifications. Now, uh, did you get married along the way? Well, I got married, yes. Uh, that was a long, long time ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it's been 50. So I'm not sure the okay. dates again. But uh, I still have the, the photo album and everything. Yeah. You know? a any children? Yeah, we had one, one boy. Okay. And then uh, he had uh, one boy and he's got a sister. 
that was six years older than the younger than him. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. And uh, did you uh, did you make use of the GI Bill to oh, buy yeah, a house? I did, yeah, I did. I went to Alton Business College. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, I finished that course. And, uh, well, I didn't finish it. I, I quit it because my worst subject in school was arithmetic. Uh huh. And this is all arithmetic when yeah. you get in the accounting. Yep. Yeah. Some of that stuff I just couldn't grasp. I was out of school too long. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, did you stay in contact with anybody you were in the service with? No. No. I did have some real good friends, and I always uh, wanted to be able to get a hold of them, but I, I had yeah. nothing to tie me to. Okay. Did you ever join any of the uh, veterans organizations like the VFW or the Legion or anything? No. No. Well, I was in one, but I wasn't in it long, you know, as they said. I guess I did more to find out what it was all about than anything else. Mm -hmm. But I did use the GI Bill. At that accountant, I, I signed up for that. Yeah. And different things, you know. Uh, okay. How do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? Oh. I, th I think it's a, it's a real good thing to have anybody go through it. Mm -hmm. Other than being in a war, yeah. you know. But it's, it's a good experience, really. And it teaches you to grow up. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long have you been retired for now? Well, I retired at 61. Okay. And uh, right now I'm 87. Okay. So that's quite a while. Yeah, about 25 years. Yeah, so we already outlived our parents. Huh. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for your interview. That's okay. I appreciate it.